Welcome to this CTSNet video on echo interpretation. I'm, my name's Joel Dunning. I'm absolutely delighted to be here with, uh, with uh, uh, Adamola Abiosi uh, from the North Ohio uh, Heart Center. Ade, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And perhaps you could just start by introducing yourself uh, and, and where you work. Oh, uh, thank you very much for the introduction, Joe. My name is Ademola Adiose. I am a consultant cardiologist with North Royal Heart and also affiliated with uh, Case Western University in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, my areas of interest are advanced echocardiography, including uh, TEE and 3D echoes. And uh, the goal of today is to talk about uh, uh, echo applications with uh, slant towards surgeons and uh, the usefulness and applications of basic echo and TEE for surgeons. Great. If we could ask you to bring up your slides, we actually met in Nigeria where you were doing some uh, some volunteerism work there, and I was absolutely blown away by the high quality of your presentation. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing it again. So uh, it'll be a pleasure to hear this. Okay, so I will run through the slides. Um, this is just to show you the standard echo views um, with the regular transthoracic echo. Uh, this is the parasitic long axis view, and I um, it's showing the long axis of the left ventricle uh, with the mitral valve here and the uh, aortic valve here, and this is the ascending aorta. We see a little bit of the right ventricle from there, um, and those are the the walls that we're looking at on the left side. Um, here is the uh, short axis at the level of the aorta. We call it the basal short axis view. This view is very good. And I will use my cursor to outline things that we're looking at. Here we're looking at a triliflate aortic valve right in the middle. Okay. And up here is going to be the pulmonic valve or the uh, right ventricular outflow tract. Up here with the pulmonic valve. Okay, and then it slides down here into the tricuspid valve. So this will be the RV inflow, and this will be the RV outflow. The nice thing about this view is you also see the interatrial septum, uh, so that this will be the left atrium and the right atrium. And uh, it's a good view to also look for things like PFO or ASD. Um, and the labels are to the left of the screen, like I mentioned. The and, and, and just as a question, how can you tell which valve is which? I never know which is the non and the left and the right coronary cusp. Oh, that's an excellent question. Um, the best way to do this is that any time you see the uh, interatrial septum, I'm trying to find my cursor. So right here is the interatrial septum. That's, can you see the cursor right here? Yeah, I can see that. And that's it to the left here. So whether you're doing a TEE or a regular echo, this cusp that is adjacent to the interatrial septum is always the non-coronary cusp. The non-coronary cusp, okay? Now, you remember I said that this is the uh, right ventricular outflow tract. So the cusp yeah. that is close to the right ventricle, of course, is the right coronary cusp. So the only one that you need to figure out will be the left, and which is right here. And sometimes you might see a trace of the left main coming off from the left coronary cusp. So left, right, and non. Yeah. This is the interatrial septum. So always use the interatrial septum as your landmark because on the trans on the TEE, which I will show later on, the interatrial septum doesn't sit right here. It's so, but wherever you find it, it's the non-coronary cusp. Great. So moving right along, this is a view that just zooms on the right ventricular output tract. You know, we need to, especially for surgeons, you 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 know you 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 more always interested about the uh, RVOT, especially in congenital uh, cases. So this is the RVOT here. You can see the aorta in short axis, and you see the pulmonary artery in long axis. So that is what you expect, unless you're dealing with something like transposition of the aorta, when both of them will be parallel. If that's not the case, the aorta, anytime you see the aorta in short axis, then the pulmonary artery will be in long axis. And here will be the um, the, pulmonary valve. I don't know why my cursor is disappearing. But here will be the pulmonary uh, the pulmonary valve uh, at the RVOT. And down here you can is see it flicking in and out there, can't you? Right in the middle. Sorry? Oh right there. You can okay. just see it flicking out. Okay. Oh there's your cursor. Yeah. Pulmonary valve right there. 
And you can see the right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery as it bifurcates. Okay, so this is what we call the right ventricle uh, inflow view um, because then you can see the inflow of the uh, tricuspid. The previous one was the outflow view. This is the inflow with the tricuspid valve at the base of the screen. Here, that's your tricuspid valve. And of course, yeah. this is the right atrium. And then this is the, sorry, this is the right atrium and this is the right ventricle. Sometimes you might see a prominent eustachian valve. That is more prominent uh, when we're doing a trans uh, esophageal echocardiogram. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is looking at the uh, heart in short axis. So it's, um, it slides at different levels. We slice it at the base of the heart. We slice it in the mid ventricle. And then we slice it at the apex of the heart. So right here, you'll see in the parasternal short axis, uh, at the base of the heart, you can see the anterior and the posterior uh, valve, mitral valve, and you can see some of the uh, cordae in short axis. This is a very good view to estimate the overall ejection fraction uh, of, the, uh, of the left ventricle. But because of the presence of the valve there, it tends to throw the number off, so we tend to rely on the next one, which is the short axis at the level of the papillary muscles. Um, here you can see the posterior medial papillary muscle where my cursor is, and this will be the anterolateral papillary muscles. And um, here you can determine regional wall motion abnormalities because uh, this will be the anterior wall here, this will be the lateral wall, this will be the inferior wall of the ventricle, and of course this will be the septum. So it's a very good view overall to estimate the left ventricular systolic function. We can get a similar view on TEE, which the surgeons usually like, you know, after uh, cabbage uh, bypass surgery, just to make sure that the graphs, uh, the anterior wall is moving, all the, uh, all the graphs are functioning well. So they usually get that uh, before they come up. Uh, so yep. here, the donut view. we can always, we can always recognize, oh, recognize Yeah, yeah, donut view, exactly. <laughs> Here is the uh, the third one. This is really at the level of the apex. You can see that it's uh, the, the cavity is kind of smaller. You don't see papillary muscles. You don't see the valves. That's because we're slicing it right here at the level of the apex of the left ventricle. This is very useful for us when we're looking for you know things like uh, takosubo with uh, or you're looking for aneurysm of the apex and um, and things like that. Then you can see that it's going to be going to be this kinetic apex. So that is the uh, short axis viewing, and then yeah. when so, so basically, if you can't see the papillary muscles and you can't see the valve, you're up at the apex. Yes, yes. The papillary I, muscles are at the middle. If you can see the valve, you're at the top. <laughs> yeah, at the top. If you can see the valve, you're at the level of the valve. If you don't okay. see the valve, you just see the papillary muscles. You're in the mid ventricle cavity, and if you don't see any of those two, then you're at the apex. That's good. All right, here is the, um, when we move the uh, transducer to the apex, then we can see the uh, apical view, which this is what we call the four chamber view, uh, because you see all the four chambers. You see the left and right ventricle, and you see the right atrium and the left uh, atrium. And uh, the labels to the left will show you um, what we're looking at. Of course, this is the septum, and this is the lateral wall. This is the mitra and uh, tricuspid valve. Um, and this is the left atrium. So I think that is quite basic. I'll go to the next one. And that's a um, kind of subcostal. You put the probe subcostally. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I have, I, at the end, I have subcostal. You put the probe right around the, uh, in the epigastrium, um, and then you will be able to take the cost, subcostal view. This we call the five chamber view because here we're, we're opening the um, left ventricular outflow tract. So you can see that in addition to the other views to the other chambers that I just talked about. Okay, so it's a very good view if you're looking for things like systolic anterior motion of the mitral valve, uh, because you can interrogate and see whether there's a significant gradient um, across the LVOT. This is a good view after uh, mitral valve repair or replacement in the OR just to make sure that there's no sound, uh, especially if you're having problems getting the patient off pump, uh, just because the anterior uh, mitral leaflet is being sucked. Uh, into the uh, ventricle by the venturi effects that we're all familiar with. Okay, so here is what we call the two-chamber view. 
uh, the, the advantage of this view it actually looks at the pure anterior wall. Unlike the other ones that look at the anterior lateral wall, this is the anterior, the, what we call the true anterior wall and the true, true inferior wall. So you only look at those two chambers and then you see the mitral valve and uh, the left atrium on this view. Uh, it's a good view when we're looking for regional wall motion abnormalities to rule out anterior and inferior myocardial infarction. Um, next one is, this is similar to what I showed you for the uh, AP cool 5 chamber. It's just uh, for the uh, uh, for the parasternal lung that we showed at the beginning. You can see the left ventricular outflow tract here. The same uh, walls that we saw on the other one. This is the anteroceptor wall and this is the lateral wall. So it's more like a repetition of the parasternal lung. And this is your question, Joe. You were talking about the subcostal view. So when we bring the uh, transducer to the uh, to the epigastric area, you can actually see a bit of the liver. So you know you're in the subcostal region. Okay. This is a good view to rule out. Like if you're worried about tamponade in the middle of the night, you know, patient just mm -hmm. had surgery and patient uh, suddenly burning and crashing, you want to quickly rule out that there's no RV compression. You just go quickly to the uh, subcostal, you get your images, the significant pericardial effusion, you'll see it here. You'll see that this right ventricle is not going to be open, it's going to collapse. So then you can do whatever you, so you don't need a, uh, a full echo in that case, you just need to get a quick and very subcostal uh, view. Even, um, even a surgeon could get that. So for a tamponade, a quick subcostal, and then maybe a long axis view in the in the left, just on the left stern edge. Would that what you'd say, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's almost anybody can get this. Uh, really, it's yeah. just that it, it's just that simple. It's not something that you're trying to look for LV function. You just want to rule out that there's no significant uh, pericardial effusion that's causing tamponade. So just put the probe right under the um, uh, the epigastrium be below the cephoid process, and then yeah. you can take your pictures, and then you will see exactly this image. Okay, this is also a good view if you're looking for PFO or ASD, which is going to be right here to rule out a significant PFO or ASD. Yeah. All right. So this is the uh, uh, American Society of Echocardiography uh, guidelines uh, for uh, TEE. Uh, imaging uh, recommended by uh, by the society, and this just gives a quick outline of the basic things that the surgeons will be interested in in the OR. When we do TEE imaging, you know, we advance the probe and we take the pictures at three uh, different uh, levels so that we can uh, have an extensive uh, evaluation of the heart. There is what we call the uh, high oesophageal. There's the mid oesophageal and then there is the uh, transgastric view so that we can explore all these structures that are listed to the left here. So I will go in a stepwise approach uh, so we can uh, talk about those structures. So you can see this here in the middle, you can see the probe is right high up here. So that's your high oesophageal views. And at this level, we can explore the valvular structures, aortic valve, pulmonary, pulmonary valve, um, and uh, that basal short axis of the aorta that I talked about, we can explore all those ones here. When we advance the probe further on, that is when we take our mid esophageal view. And a lot of the pictures are taken here, you know, the two chamber view, the commissural view for the mitral valve, um, that is very critical for mitral valve repair, all those information we get here. Um, <clears throat> and then when we advance the probe further, that is when we get like uh, short axis views that I talked about, like when patient has bypass surgery and we're trying to look at overall wall motion and we get a short axis view. This is also uh, a very important view when uh, in cases of aortic valve uh, surgery, when you're trying to get the gradients across the valve uh, before or after surgery. Yeah, so that, that, pic that picture just there, it says transgastric, but the pictures, the, the probes in the esophagus. Is your probe actually in the stomach when you do that? Yeah, the probe is in the stomach when we do that. 